what's up everybody it is a uh, beautiful cold day here on the farm here in Tennessee and uh, I'm about to put the little tractor to work today I'm headed to uh, headed to our farm actually where we're gonna have the store and I'm gonna try to uh, there's some trees I noticed I walked on the farm the other day and so I want to get out there and <clears throat> try to get all that cleared out as much as I can. It'd be kind of a test for this little tractor. Some of it might be a little too much for the tractor, but I guess we'll see. Um, I'm going to try to move some trees and kind of clean up. I need to actually put some dirt on a culvert. So do a little work like that around the farm. I got to go take, take care of some paperwork later. Got to plethora of things going on today but kind of just really wanted to get this tractor out and see what it'll do hey, and I actually was I was underestimating this tractor I said it would only do 21 miles an hour we're running 24 right now so and so these transmissions are so strange in these tractors they they're all so different this one doesn't have a D range I'm used to the D range being you like your road here it only has C <coughs> so I did leave my tiller on the back just because it's, I mean, it's the same width basically as the tractor and it kind of gives me a little extra weight because some of these trees are going to weigh probably a good bit, so I need some extra traction. But that is the agenda for today is to go try to move some stuff with this tractor, take care of some paperwork, and if I have time, I need to get some fuel to the uh, the bulldozer. Mr. Cookie will be out on the, the deer. Hopefully y'all saw the video. We got that thing going. Boy, this thing really fades on a hill. I know that. <coughs> it dropped from 24 to 18. Oh, I had to gear down to low. But, yeah, it is, it's getting closer to time. I'm getting excited. I can feel that feel it in the air that it's almost planting time and spraying time so um, I'm getting anxious for that uh, that's always exciting for me but that's what we got going on I appreciate everybody for tuning in to the show please hit that like button and if you don't already hit subscribe and I do ask that you hit the little bell so it'll notify you when a new video drops but um, and always comment below. Let me know any of your thoughts, uh, video topics, any of that stuff you'd like for me to cover more in depth or whatever. Uh, I'm going to go into the planning stuff a whole lot this year, try to explain population, uh, seed choice, varieties, all that. I'm going to really try to dive into those nuts and bolts for everybody that's, that's wondering or new into farming. But, uh, guys, it is... Uh, it's a great day, so let's let's have a great day. It's a great day to have a great day. Isn't that what the old, the old saying is? Um, this is still weird to me. Like, you have to actually clutch this tractor, and that's something that I'm not used to doing in a long time. A lot of the tractors kind of got away from clutching. But let's see how this goes. I want to show you guys something pretty cool. I'm here on the farm, and this is actually where the farm store is gonna go. But uh, right here in front of me, there's a little tree limb I'm gonna push out of the way. But up in that neck, I think that's where I'm planning to put my beehives. I'm gonna order quite a few more beehives. I had one this past year, and uh, it was really cool. It was a cool process having bees. So we're gonna expand, because the goal is to have our own honey in the farm store. So I'm probably gonna put about five or six beehives right in that little cranny back in there where they'll be kind of protected and isolated but still near the crops and all that but i want to show you something else pretty cool so i had cover crop put on this place now it's it's spread pretty thin so you're not going to really see a whole lot of it but these are some of my favorite parts of the cover crop I love seeing these little these little jokers here. Check out that. Look at this. Look at that. These are what you want because they, they're so large, it breaks the ground up a little bit. And 
I've got a mixture of these. These, uh, you know, it's there's some radish, turnip, and there's even something else in here. I can't remember. It actually gets really long, and they really break that compaction in the ground. That's one of the coolest parts with those. But I, I love seeing the radishes and turnips and stuff in there. Even more so, like there's some wheat, uh, I can't remember, rye, all that in the mix. It's a five species mix out here. But those are my favorite to see. It's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of busting up the ground a little bit. And as they, they age and they deteriorate into the ground, it's really good for the soil as well. So the cover crop stuff is so cool to me. Um, I'm, Actually, that's kind of been one of the things I've been working on is trying to figure out how I want to outfit my planter because I'm wanting to plant green on a good bit of the cover crop. I've had really good luck just testing that last year with planting green. Planter did really good, so I'm going to put all new openers on it, but thinking about even going to some notched closing wheels, see if that'll help. But we are on the farm and it's woolly out here right now. This was actually where I had pumpkins this past year. It didn't rain, so it was way too dry. They didn't do any good. I got enough basically for my family to have pumpkins. <clears throat> and there was some extra, I mean, there was a fair amount of pumpkins in there, but it wasn't enough for me to try to sell. But the farm store is actually gonna go right up on that kind of high point. It's gonna run straight to the road and down in here will be the pumpkin patch. On the other side will be the sweet corn. And really this whole front field is gonna basically be an agritourism setup. Like I said, right in here, that will be where the bees are gonna be most likely. That's what I'm thinking. I kind of cleaned that out with a bulldozer. I think that'd be a good area to stick the bees. And it, it's close enough that they can get out and you know pollinate, do all their things they need to do. But it's also far enough away that if customers are out here picking their own pumpkins and doing some of the you pick things, they're not gonna get attacked by bees. Oh. Which they, the bees do pretty well. I've never, I have never had my bees attack me. Um, but that's where this stuff's gonna go. And I mean, it's about 14 acres up here in the front field. The big part of this farm is this field right over there across the ditch. It's about 60 acres in that block. It will still be row crop for now. I mean, I told my wife, we've got 110 acres of farmable ground on this place. It's 195 acres total. And uh, we got about 80, you know, 85 acres or so of woods. And I like having the woods because I like to hunt and uh, I enjoy having some woods on the, on the farm. I grew up with a place like that. So not gonna take out probably any more trees, but I'm okay with essentially turning this whole farm into the agritourism thing if we see that we can go that way. 110 acres is a lot of ground for produce and things like that. But this front part is gonna start off all that way. And, and eventually I've kind of even, I've got a lot of interest in an orchard. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what we're gonna do. We're gonna have some livestock on the place as well, but this is where the magic is gonna happen. But I will be row cropping all the other parts this year. So I gotta go around and move little trees and stuff out of the way. And I'm trying to walk lightly because I got some new boots. Got an early birthday present for my wife uh, my birthday's not until May, but these boots apparently have been selling out. And so she got me some new boots. And these are work boots, believe it or not. I had a pair just like them. They were just a different, a different color. They were a darker brown, but they're Tacovas, And I love these boots. They've been great work boots. I actually got two years out of the other ones. They're not wore out. I mean, they're pretty heavily worn, but they're not wore out. So it's a they passed the farm test but i got these in and i love them but i'm in the break-in stage which is always fun with a new pair of boots i just drove here down the hill kind of to go to the back part of this farm and there's a pretty good sized tree down we're going to see what we can do with it a little tractor here might not be able to do a whole lot but I'm thinking maybe if I can get way down here, if I can just push it enough to get by it, 
push it over that way because our road goes through here and takes us to the backfield. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see what little little dude here can do. Never doubt me. That's basically what that tractor just said to me. Never doubt me. That did really good. Pushed him out of the way, got it up here. When I got down here, especially, because I had two trees, that could push them right on out of the way. It's partly why I left the tiller on the back. Just, because the tractor, I mean, it's a 90 horsepower tractor. That's obviously nothing compared to my 8420, but you know, back in the day, 100 horsepower, 90 horsepower, that was a lot of horsepower on a tractor. So it's, just, it's got some power. It's got a little power to it. It's just real light. There is water in the tires, the back tires, to help weight it down, but there are no wheel weights. That may be something I eventually add, but the tiller's at least giving us a little extra weight on the back. Now right up here, the culvert, it needs some dirt on top of it, but I'm gonna cross over there first try to fix their work, uh, get any trees out of the way that I need to, and then we'll patch that culvert. So for some weird reason, my audio did not work on the GoPro on this part, but as you guys can see, this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for right here, is the the trees that are down like this, and this was a, obviously a big tree. You can actually see it over there, right there, where it's uh, it had died and part of it broke over in the field. Well, that is exactly what we're going around looking for because come time to spray and come time to plant, obviously you can't have that in the field. So we're going to try to get it out of the way and uh, see what we can do with it and uh, put the little tractor to work. a lot better that's got it pretty good it's obviously a little chunky in places here like little chunks there some here and that's where we just walk around and pick up chunks and throw them i could keep on scraping it with the the blade or the bucket but 
I'm tracking this up and I ultimately want to no-till all this. So that'll be a little bit of a rough spot planting right here, but it actually, it won't be that bad. The planter will plant right across it, but I, that's one of the things with no-till. And that's why, one of the reasons why farmers want people to stay out of their dang fields, because when we no-till them especially, I mean, let's, let's back up here. Aside from the fact that it's just not that person's property that's trespassing on it and riding on it, <laughs> so, you know, you could just respect other people's property, there also comes into the fact that a lot of farmers now are no-till. It's better for the ground, better for the soil all around, good. Yields are better with it. Uh, so if you're no-till in a place, you don't need donuts cut in the field. You don't need huge ruts in the field. Like I said, for the most part, this ain't too bad. Right up there is the worst, but it's always really wet. I mean, you can see water standing right there. But that's one of the reasons why we don't want people in our fields. We're not just being jerks. Some people think that, eh, but whatever. All right, I'm gonna go down here and move these. I've shared in other videos that I'm kind of notorious for chasing squirrels. And here is actually, I'm, you know, I'm out here to push the trees out of the way. Well, I found a squirrel to chase. So this, this field that I'm in here, it had some terrible washes in it on these hills and there's actually a structure put in right there but just over the years i'm sure that there was some tillage done on these hills and it has created some awful washes well this one is relatively small compared to the freaking grand canyon that's over here so i'm putting a little tractor i'm really making it work today down here at the bottom of the hill up in the woods there was kind of a high hump there and I don't work that part. It's just around the edge. So I'm going and scooping dirt. I'm gonna try to actually fill this one in with dirt. I've been put a couple scoops. It's gonna take quite a bit of scoops. And these, <laughs> it's heavy because it's really squatting my front tires. I'm hoping I don't end up with a freaking blowout before this is done. But my goal is to try to fill that in, smooth it up a little bit. And you know, if I can get it planted, that will hold, especially with me doing cover crop out here. And depending on how the time goes there, I may try to do the same right here. Here's another one. It's just a random little kind of wash. And it's not that big. It'll just take, it'll still take quite a few bucket loads. But that is my goal now to try to get these filled in and just see, see what we can do with it. Maybe make it where it ain't so bad. At least two washes can be taken out the other ones it would take a thousand bucket loads i mean it is a huge hole but that's the current squirrel that i am chasing i don't understand how they even get this back but this bucket i'm gonna put it up here keep i'm gonna just kind of work my way down because it is pretty deep in there i mean you can see that's that's pretty dead gum deep <laughs> but it's manageable i think i think i'll be able to do this uh, as long as i keep having enough dirt down there where I, i'm not going to take any dirt out of the field itself because that's topsoil and i need it but that's what i'm working with right now and my tires front tires are making me a little sketched out i may have to end up may have to put a little extra air in them see that wrinkle right there oh she hangs in there I figured I would share a little bit about the progress we're making here. It's so slow. <laughs> I have probably put 30 bucket loads of dirt in this thing so far. And I mean, we're getting a lot closer, but it's still gonna take a while. And you'll notice up there, I have the bucket really low and really close to the ground. Like I'm probably skimming the bottom of it in places. And that's because this thing is sketchy with this huge load of dirt in it. I mean, I, I told you all my tires are like going flat uh, dang near, but also just, I mean, I almost turned this thing over just a little while ago. Um, luckily with the front end loader, 
I, I reacted well and I put it down and it leveled the tractor out. But I had it up, I was about to dump it out and the back tire over here just came up. Scared me to death. Thought I was gonna have to go home and change my underwear. But uh, I did get it <laughs> stabilized. So now I'm keeping the bucket very low. Again, we're really working this tractor but trying to make some progress here because this one i just think it'll be okay i feel like this one will hold the dirt better than the others uh, if i can just get the dirt in it with the time we have i probably will not get that one over there today because i still got to go do some office work today unfortunately but i want to get this one knocked out so got the bucket right on the ground so that i don't give myself a heart attack and hopefully I am alive to do more videos for you guys. Slowly but surely, slowly but surely. We're chipping away at it here. I've got it pretty good up here. Now this was the worst part right there. It took a lot of loads of dirt, but I'm just gonna keep coming in from up here and dumping down and just, I'm gonna work my way down this, this ditch or whatever you want to call it because I was coming in from the side here and dumping it in there and that's when I just dang near turned the tractor over now I was doing it with caution I'm I've been around this equipment enough to know like you get loaded on a hillside is sketchy but I was going real slow it didn't matter it about went on me so I am now coming from up here and just loading and then i'm pushing it down which i like to do actually because i'm putting it in there i'm tilting the blade i'm pushing it in and then i'm actually tilting the blade back and i'm blading it back so i'm kind of mashing it down as i do it i'm gonna be driving on this <laughs> so i want it obviously to be very stout and packed down but it's it's uh it's setting up pretty good up uh, yeah, this, I, I think this will really hold. Obviously, if we get a toad strangler of a rain, it will wash some of that out. But the goal would be if I could get in here and plant this uh, enough to where it would hold it. I might have to come back in here before I plant and maybe do a little patching on it uh, to put a little more dirt on there. But it would be so nice to not have a stupid wash right here to plant around because I've already got two over there that are freaking huge. But it's coming along, it's coming along. And the water's gonna run because there's a natural little slant, like a little line right there. So the water will run down that. So obviously the, the goal will be to get it established before that happens. Look at all the buzzards. Must be something dead out there in the field. Hope it's not a bad omen. Kind of show you guys this other one. Just one of them. There, I mean, you can just get an idea of how terrible that is. And the bad thing is there is a structure right there. Like there's, there's a structure in there and it is still washed out. I'm telling you guys, tillage, especially on the hills like that. Now with the produce stuff that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be doing tillage. I have a tiller on the back of the tractor right now. On the small stuff like that kind of stuff, you really have to do the tillage, but I mean, you don't have to, I guess, but uh, it's pretty commonplace. But the old style of tilling for row crop, especially the, the hill ground and stuff, it wreaks havoc on the ground. Because um, I guarantee you, there are people that when they were working this ground, like they'd have probably disc down that side, disc down this side. Eventually they would have gotten a disc and disc all the way down the middle. They'd have probably had it where you could plant across it. And then the first rain that came, we would wash all that out. That's why it's taken me like a hundred bucket loads of dirt to try to fill it back in. It's always something. And it's 1240. I didn't even eat lunch. I did not anticipate this job. And now I am very hungry. But uh, I don't like to work on an empty stomach, but I don't even have a truck. I'm in that tractor. So I ain't driving up to the gas station. So we're just gonna have to power through lunch today.
that's a wrap for this thing today. It is not where it needs to be yet. It is substantially better, but I still, I still got to do a good bit to it. I have just, like I said, I've run out of time. Run out of time today. But I mean, this right here, I could actually plant it. Like, if I had more time, I could come down and slide, but I'm, it needs to set or I need more dirt because if I try to slope, if y'all can see this high spot right here, I need to put the blade down and blade it, but when my tire gets in the center there, it's cutting down into it. So I really need more dirt put in there because it's it's getting better. I mean, it's not horrible right now. Like I, I would not be afraid to plant across it. Realistically, what I would probably do is try to hold one end of the planter in here, one end on the other side, so that I don't drive the tractor across it. And that way it wouldn't mash it down really hard. Now that it kind of take hold. But this up here is substantially better. I mean, I mean, this is, uh, it's come a long way. Like that right there, you know, that was really bad. I'm gonna say, I still am gonna say probably 20 to 30 more buckets of dirt is what it would take. Maybe, I mean, it might even take more than that. But that's a lot better than it was. I came in, I kind of cut that. There was like a high point right there. I kind of bladed it off a little bit. It just needs more time. I need more time on it, which is fine. I need to come out here because I still want to work on that one right there. But that's that's a lot better. I've been wanting to, to do something with that. I have no clue what to do on the big one. I mean, I'd need to uh, uh, like order a hundred dump truck loads of dirt to try to fill it in. It's awful. But I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the progress made in just a couple hours. Well, several hours actually, it's two o'clock now. And I am so hungry. Now, I've got to drive this thing back and I've got to go up to FSA. You know, I used to think farmers here had a ton of paperwork. I mean, I, I still am like, man, we do so much paperwork. Never knew how much paperwork was involved in farming. And then my wife and I have recently been watching Clarkson Farms. I don't know if y'all have watched it on Amazon Prime. It's hilarious. And Jeremy Clarkson, is, he's a trip on there. But uh, he, he has a ton of paperwork. He's farming in Britain. And their paperwork makes our paperwork look like child's play, the amount of crap they have to fill out. So I've been a little more appreciative after watching that show. dad's having some fertilizer flown on the hay fields and there it is well that's the day in the books there y'all saw the plane i didn't really get to tell you a whole lot about it that was actually uh, keith flying on some fertilizer on the pasture ground and i think some of the hay ground maybe I can't remember if where all he did it. Dad had him uh, fly on some fertilizer. And after that, ran up to FSA, had to do some paperwork. Like I was saying earlier, it is so much paperwork in farming, but I guess it's not as bad as it is in like Europe. But uh, now I'm having a brewski, Ghost River. I don't know if y'all are listening have ever had it but it's actually brewed uh, locally here in Memphis. And uh, man, it is good. The Golden Ale. It's very, it's a smooth beer. It ain't got that weird craft beer taste. And again, it's local to my area. Got the Tacovas representing, got the Tacova boots on, double representing. But uh, something pretty cool. So I don't remember if I told y'all that I was looking at a drop deck trailer. And we moved around. Yesterday, we actually moved the bulldozer and a track hoe to the next places we needed them. And our low boy, this is what we call our trailer. For anybody that like completely doesn't know anything at all about it, 
a low boy trailer is what they call like what you move a track hoe or a bulldozer on <clears throat> pulling in behind a semi obviously but the one we have it has ramps that fold down and it's it's a good heavy trailer but it's slick and the track hoe my dad has actually slid the track hoe off before loading it loading it is very sketchy because you got metal tracks going onto a metal trailer and they slide around real easy well it got pretty sketchy yesterday with my deer when he was loading it and then i unloaded it and it was it, you just are very uncomfortable and it is pretty i mean it's dangerous it's just really dangerous and so after yesterday talking to dad i told him i said so we need to invest in a drop deck and a drop deck instead of having ramps the actual trailer sits down on the ground and the truck drives out from under it and then you just drive right up on the trailer you don't you're not very high off the ground so i went and i have purchased a drop deck and it's this will be a trailer that will literally last me i'll be dead and gone the trailer will still be trucking but um we got it and it's a heavy duty enough one that i could even move the volvo it's a 50 50 ton 52 ton trailer so it's rated for like 110,000 pounds or something and uh I don't, i'm not doing the conversion right now somebody can correct me but it's over a hundred thousand pound rating trailer so my volvo weighs eighty four thousand pounds so i could move that volvo around if i need to but we are getting it it looks awesome um it is it's new it's black it's got aluminum polished wheels it'll look really slick behind that mean peterbilt right there <laughs> but um again it'll last me forever and we will use it my dad and them will use it i'll use it so be a nice thing but i'm gonna have this brewski i feel like you have to like have a drink when you're videoing because people are like does he even drink he's just holding the beer and i'll even no i'm not gonna pour it out i was gonna say i'll prove there's beer in there but i'm not gonna waste good beer um i'm about to get in here feed the cows and go up here to the house and call it a day that is gonna be a wrap for you guys and there she is she got to rest the little tractor she did good today we got to go back out there and get back to work but tomorrow got to go and take care of some paperwork on the the trailer and uh, scope out this farm where i got mr cookie and try to lay out a game plan on it so we've got another busy day coming up but that is it for today guys thank you for watching please hit that like button hit subscribe and share these with your friends if you enjoy them and uh, uh also to the people that have commented given topics and things i have noted them and they will be covered i will be going into those i'm going to do quite a few discussion videos covering some of y'all's topics that you put in i appreciate every one of those and if you're watching right now and you have a topic or anything you want me to cover comment it below i will gladly discuss it thanks so much guys y'all have a good one